ilaha illa Allah Asyadu an la ilaha illa Allah Asyadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Asyadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya ala salam Hayya ala salam Hayya ala al-falah حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام لتميان الأكملين على المبعوث بحق هداية ورحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد أولا أعتذر للأخوة الذين لا يفهمون إلا اللغة العربية فهذه الخطبة ستكون في اللغة الإنجليزية وثاني أقول لكم بأن الله سبحانه وتعالى أنعم عليكم باللغة العربية فاستغلوا هذه الفرصة العظيمة المباركة أن تسمعوا إلى العلماء أن تسمعوا إلى العلماء My brothers and my sisters in Islam The reality of what is happening today I am forced to spend this khutbah Just speaking in the English language Because there is so much that is happening and it might take more than 25 minutes or 30 minutes. We have, alhamdulillah, a suggestion box right there. So if you have a suggestion, before you write your complaint, please write, I don't care about Palestinian lives. Then put your complaint and go in and put it in the box. And if you're worrying about the dunya and your dollar that you're going to make or the money that you're going to lose because you are a bit late to work, then remember, wallahi, this world is more than than a few dollars in our pockets. We have a huge misconception that is happening today. We have a huge misconception that's actually happened for over 75 years. Where the Muslim world has been prosecuted, humiliated, disgraced, killed and murdered. And we have this thought and ideology that we need to have a stronger number or a greater number or a stronger force in order to regain the honor for ourselves. And we could not be more wrong than this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةً كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ شَرْطْ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ how many times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, how many times a small number of people defeat a large army, a stronger army? There's a condition, bi'ithnillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just these two words should make us understand the reality of why we have been disgraced and humiliated for more than 75 years. And why did the Muslims of the past conquer the world for over 1,300 years? Why? It is because they lived a life trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we live a life trying to please the kuffar. Bear with me. By the end of the khutbah, you will have a better understanding bi idnillahi azza wa jal. So it's never been about number. It's never been about weapons. It's never been about the number of army. It's never been that way. A story that's been embedded in my mind and your mind since we were young. The greatest battle for the Muslims. The battle of Badr where the Prophet Sallallahu and his Sahaba were less than 300 men. Defeated the chiefs of disbelief. The strongest Arabs. Over a thousand soldiers. They defeated them. Why? Because of their number? No, it was because of their iman, their certainty, their belief, their faith in Allah the Most High. And when the Muslims for the first time in the battle of Hunayn, for the first time ever, they were more numbered than the polytheists. For the first time they had a stronger army. 
the Sahaba thought that it's an automatic victory. The Sahaba thought it was an automatic victory for the first time. Our army is greater. Our men are stronger. And they were about to lose that battle. They were about to lose that battle. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he's a prophet, he's not allowed to fall back. He charged at the army and he says, Ana Nabiyu la kathib, Ana ibn Abdul Muttalib. He would charge at these polytheists and he would chant and he would say, I am the prophet and I do not lie. He's reigniting the iman in the Sahaba. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the Nabi, promised the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he will get victory even if, it was, even if it was by himself. Until the Sahaba realized that they don't need to connect with the numbers, but they need to connect with Allah. And then they got the victory. The enemies of Islam didn't just start to be or to divide the Ummah 75 years ago. No, they've been trying since the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they'll send the spies into the Muslim world. They will send the spies. What's their mission? Go see. How is their connection with their God? So the spies will go to a certain place and they'll see the Muslims. They'll see the Muslims loving one another, being true brothers, being true sisters. Don't care about this world. Don't care about the money of this world. No, they don't care about that. But they care about praying and connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learning the religion and building that faith, building that iman. When the Fajr prayers was huge like this number of Jumu'ah, the spies will go back to their leaders and they will say, don't waste your time with those people in that certain place, those Muslims. You can never defeat them. As when the spies go back and they see a place, a different place where they care about this world. That's their number one priority. It's their priority to have a house and have a car and build a home. And even after I have to cheat and even if I have to declare war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even and even. They don't attend the mosques. They don't respect the mashayikh. They don't uh, educate themselves in the deen. They don't pray. They don't... Nothing. And then they say to their leaders, that's the type of people we can defeat. And they'll go and they'll defeat the Muslims. It was never about numbers. It was never about numbers. It was always about our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all know the famous story of wa mu'tasama. When a lady... When a lady in a room in, with the Romans, this Roman people pulled her scarf off, Muslim woman, and she was thrown into prison. What did the Mu'tasim do? A leader of the Muslims, he sends an email, he sends, he sends a mail, a message, a letter. He says, Min amir al mu'minin ila kalb al room. If you don't, he says, from the, a letter from the Amir al-Mu'mineen, the leader of the Muslims, to the dog of the Romans. If you do not pull this woman out of the prison, I'm going to prepare an army that you've never ever seen. And al-Mu'tasim billah, he prepared an army and he went and fought the Romans. That's the izzah and that's the karama, that's the honor that you and I are starving for. Why did he prepare the army? And why did the army follow him? It's because they didn't care about this world. They didn't care about this world. They listened to him and he listened to the army. They prepared an army straight away. And that's the honor that we had. But now we're in a state of weakness. We're in a state of weakness. And the Muslims had that state at one stage in Mecca. And the Prophet وسلم, was alive. He was what? He was alive when the da'wah first began and the Muslims were prosecuted. They were getting, subhanallah, boycotted, no food, no drink. They were getting killed in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he do? Did he go protest? Did he go dance? Did he go sing? Did he go and get allies from the chiefs of disbelief? What did he do? He says, Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. He says, say la ilaha illallah and you will be successful. You will be successful. You will regain success. You will get honor if you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the way we get the honor back. That is the way we get the honor back. It is not through the numbers. Protests. Please forgive me. First, I want to say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every single person that went down to the protest. 
and followed the legislation of the Quran and Sunnah doing it by subhanAllah dancing and so on. Well done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. But I ask you a question. Don't be emotional driven. I'm going to ask you a question. Put it through the Quran and Sunnah. Filter it. Filter it through the Quran and Sunnah. Filter your emotions through the Quran and Sunnah. Learn the facts. What does the Quran and Sunnah say about these things? When it comes to the protest, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to achieve? What are we trying to achieve? What's the purpose? Brother, to raise awareness. We've been trying to raise awareness for the past 75 years. What has happened? We're trying to please the kuffar. We're trying to get the attention of the kuffar to help us Muslims. When did the kuffar ever, ever care about our lives? When we're trying to please the creation for help and we forget about the creator, what are we doing to ourselves? It's like as if we're shooting ourselves in the legs. They can never benefit us. They, dis they despise us. They never loved us. They never cared about us. And they never will. Who said this? Allah, the Almighty, has said in this Quran. He says, He says, They will never, ever, ever be pleased with you until you leave your religion, until you follow their ways, until you start drinking alcohol and drowning into riba and subhanAllah having girlfriend and boyfriends and adapting, adopting this agenda until you follow their way. That's the only way they will support you. When you're a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uqsimu billah, it's the last thing on their mind if they have a mind. They don't care about us. They never did. And they never will. They never will. They have the audacity to bomb my hospital and then claim on news that they did it themselves. So who are we trying to convince? And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the brothers and sisters who are fighting him in that way. But that's not the bigger picture. The bigger picture is you and I. When we go down the protest, Malash, you're going to get upset with me. But when we go down in, in protesting and we're singing... And we're dancing, and the sister doesn't have a hijab, and the guy is checking her out. This is reality, and the guy is checking her out. What victory are you going to get from that? What victory are we going to get from that? You want to need to know and establish that victory comes by from Allah and only Allah. In yansurkum, if you give victory to Allah, Allah has promised to give us victory. When we're there dancing, shouting. And screaming, there's no benefit. They will never help us. So we try to get their attention and forget the, the, the attention from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's become a trend. You see a brother posting on Instagram or whatever, 10 posts, Palestine, 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 Palestine. And in between, he's got a shisha in his mouth. Or he's at a club. Or he's at a party. Or he's taking drugs. Who are you mocking, man? Who are you fooling here? Who are you fooling? When the sister's there screaming and yelling, Ya Allah, help us. She's got a hijab. How, are you gonna, how, how does that work? How does that help you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forced the hijab upon you for your own good. When the brother's screaming, Ya Allah, help us. And his head's not touched the ground for years. How is Allah subhanahu wa going to help us? We have people out there saying, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And these same people, Illa man rahma rabbi, have declared war against Allah. And his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by drowning into riba, by buying homes through the bank, or building apartments through the bank, or financing a car. How do you want help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you've declared war with him? Billahi alaykum, I ask you a question about Allah. I ask you, how do you want victory from Allah? And you can only get victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are the same ones that said, Ya Allah, I'm ready to take you on. I'm ready to go to war with you, Ya Allah. And yet we want, we want his help. And yet we want his help. Brother, you're going to say, Sheikh, you're going to say, Subhanallah, but this is small things, man. Get with time. People are dying. Kids are dying. Wallahi, that ideology has costed us what we are, Subhanallah, in today. That ideology. Why? Evidences. Evidences. The battle of Uhud that you and I know. The battle of Uhud. Who was there? The Prophet ﷺ was in the army. Who was there? The greatest Sahaba was in the army. The companions of Rasulullah ﷺ. One command he told them. 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not come down this mountain. Do not come down this mountain. One command. And they came down this mountain. What happened? The Muslims were sandwiched. And the Muslims started to kill themselves because they couldn't move. Sandwiched from one command. You are not living every single day in our lives that we barely follow a command. We barely follow a command. This is the reality. This is the reality of what is happening today. So we have the streets full. And we want help from everyone. But the mas masajids, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happened? You, are, can, you can be in the house of Allah. You need to understand that no one will help the Palestinians. And no one will help the Muslims except Rabbil Alameen. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, no one. Don't rely on this leader and that leader. Don't rely on them. They can rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the messages are empty, what victory? The kuffar, the enemies, said that the Muslims will regain power when their fajr prayer is this amount. Their fajr prayer. We barely get a line. We barely get a line. Ya Allah, why is, why is this happening to the Muslims? Have we checked ourselves? Have we checked what we do in our daily lives? And then we spend our time with worthless arguments. Worthless arguments. What do we do today? We're on social media. Did that person support? Is he pro-Palestine or pro-Israel? Uh, what, what, who, what, what does this guy do? Who does he follow? And so on and so forth. First, a bit of advice. Go through your following lists and see anyone that is pro-Israel, uh, pro unfollow them. That's the bare minimum you and I can do. The second thing is, why are you wasting time? They can't help us. They can't benefit us. Aslan, what we love doing, subhanAllah, is when a kafir, a disbeliever, a kafir says something good about Palestine, we share it. Muslims, Muslims, I don't care about other Muslims. Muslims, share it. Give him popularity. Give him popularity. When a sheikh speaks, he's got a beard. That's not going to work. When a sheikh speaks, nothing. People giving millions. And not just that, these people, they became famous because at least half of their followers are Muslims. And they will want to sit down and complain. Why are you complaining? Why are you complaining? A person says something good about Palestine, Taib, and we share it. And subhanAllah, if you look at his 300 other videos, he's swearing about the deen and swearing at our Prophet but nahna, we're not there. Mafi ha, mafi shi. We just has post. When it comes to a shaykh, now nothing. And I only know these two people because I've seen on social media. But we want to, we always push that DJ Khaled. Whoever knows DJ Khaled knows him. Because he had a Palestinian flag or I don't know what picture. Oh, we all loved him and all push him and everything. Now we're all dirty at him because he hasn't said nothing. That his whole life doesn't believe in Allah. Why do you care? Why are you following him? Is he going to help the Palestinians? If he cared, he wouldn't even be that singer because he'll be in the mosque praying. Mo Salah, another one. Why is he doing nothing about Palestine? Ya yeah, I Ammin, mean, this person every year commits shirk. He commits shirk openly with his family. How many Muslims is he fooling? That's the arguments that we have. That's the arguments we have. Worthless. We want to find hope from the non-Muslims or non-practicing Muslims. But when the Sheikh is speaking or a Da'i is speaking, Nah, this goes olden days. When you try and come back to the Quran and you get victory. Brother, you're not living in this time. Really? Really? Allah, Allah, the Prophet ﷺ told us, it's two things that you and I need to hold on and bite on. Do not let go. Quran and Sunnah. When there's no Quran and Sunnah, that's what's happening. When, a, when people bomb a, 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 a hospital, we can't say nothing because they control the media. We can't do nothing. We can't do nothing. It's because we moved away from the Quran and Sunnah. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. When we come back to the Quran and Sunnah, we will conquer this world without one bullet shot. Because they used to fear us because we put our head in the ground and prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they feared us. They never feared the numbers. They never feared the guns and the tanks and all these weapons. Never. And they would never fear it. But the fear when we connect with Allah. You want 
subhanAllah, hope, listen to the Qur'an and Sunnah, follow the Qur'an and Sunnah. And before I mention the hadith and some of the verses that give us hope and give us relaxation, my brother, to my sister, I have to mention a few things about Palestine. Wallahi, first, if there's nothing in your heart and there's no pain in your heart, my brother and my sister, recheck your iman. Because it's either one of the two things. Either you're very uneducated, very ignorant, or there's something wrong with your iman. If you're living your life since last two weeks and nothing has changed in your life, you have not made dua for them, you have not given sadaqah for them, honestly, recheck your iman. That's one thing. The other thing, who are they targeting? Yes, they're targeting civilians and so on. But there's a group, there's a group of people that they're targeting and they're the kids. The targeting kids. Type why? Type another story that you and I know. Pharaoh, the biggest tyrant that lived on earth. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, what did he do? When he heard about the prophecy that one man will destroy your kingdom, yeah, Pharaoh, one man, he killed every single young boy and every single old boy. Every single one of them. Every newborn, he would kill them every single year until his advisors came to him and said to him, Yeah, Pharaoh, if you keep on doing this, we're going to have no slaves. So one year, yes, one year, no. One year he'll kill the kids and one year he won't kill the kids. Tayyib, what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed Musa alayhi salatu wasalam to grow and he was the reason that the kingdom of Pharaoh was demolished. So these people fear the kids. These ki- people fear the kids. Wallahi, they fear them. When they see the kid around him, buildings are crushed. When they see a kid no more than 10 years old, my brothers and my sisters, around him, the buildings are destroyed. His mom and dad are dead. His older brother and his older sister are dead. His grandma and his grandfather are dead. And he's saying, Ya Allah! Ya Allah! Wallahi, they hate it. Wallahi, it makes him shake. When an idea of soldiers standing in front of them with his gun and his armor, and this kid, no more than 10 years old, picks up a rock. He picks up a rock. They shake. They tremble. It is because of the iman that these kids have and these people have. Wallahi, it is because of them we have honor and we can still put our heads up. 75 years and the words that come out of the mouth is Ya Allah the words that come out of the mouth is Ya Allah when they see the mother that her children have died not one tear drops and she's proud of her martyrs they shake they want to eradicate any hope that all the Muslims in the world have when the father is proud of his sons and his daughters who are martyrs, don't feel sorry for them. Wallahi, feel sorry for ourselves. Don't feel sorry for them. Feel sorry for ourselves. Look at the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he says that on a day of judgment in Jannah, when we see the people who have martyred, who died in Gaza, for example, we would wish... We would wish we would come back down to earth and die the way they died because of the privileges they had. We would wish to die under buildings and crushed because of the privileges they get in Jannah. Don't worry. Victory will come. Wallahi, if 1,000 children die in Palestine, if 1 million dies, Wallahi, that is more easier when a kid or a, a boy or a girl has been raised in Muslim family on La ilaha illallah and they die in the Western world on drugs. They die on La ilaha, subhanAllah, ilaha, except drugs. There is no God except for women. There is no God except for drugs. There is no God except for alcohol. There is no drugs. There is no, there's no God except so on and so. Wallahi, that one death is worse than a million shuhada martyrs. Wallahi al-Azim. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ Don't think for a second that those who died as martyrs, that they are dead. 
بل أحياء but indeed they are alive with the Lord the same thing does the, the, the prophets before they die they get asked a question do you want to do you want to die or stay alive they will say بل الرفيق الأعلى but it is the company of the most high they want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these shuhada that are dying they are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يرزقون We have this ideology now within the youth that we want to say, oh, the Sheikh might say, oh, get on with your life because they're going to be martyrs. This is wrong. This is wrong. Yes, they're going to be martyrs. And that what give, that's what gives us hope. In, but if we don't change our lives, if we have not come back to the deen, if we don't come back to the masajid, if we don't increase our Islamic knowledge, it's as if we're not Muslims. It's as if we don't care about the blood of the Muslims. Wallahi. Say, so yes, get on with your life. But get on with your life by changing your life, by coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each and every single one of us here, especially me, we need to change our ways and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the most important thing. And I end with this saying. A woman from there, a woman from there, she says that people think that Gaza is bleeding. People think that Gaza, the Palestinian's life, is bleeding. And she says, you can't be more wrong. For indeed, our blood is a sacrifice for people who have no blood. For indeed, our blood is a sacrifice for people who have no heart, no blood in the heart that's pumping. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. They die, they enter Jannah. How are we going to die? In what state are you and I going to die? Their death should be a wake-up call for you and I. If that doesn't wake us up, then what does? I'll call you Hada wa astaghfirullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa anwala. والله سنفرح وسيحزنون سنفرح وسيبكون سننتصر وسيهزمون أمواتنا في الجنة وأمواتهم في الجحيم By Allah We will rejoice and they will mourn We will smile and they'll be upset We will laugh and they will cry For indeed our deaths Our deaths are in paradise And their deaths are in in the blazing fire. In the blazing fire, my brothers and my sisters. Don't worry. And I give you a small advice. Stop sharing videos that show the Palestinians or the Muslims weak. To stop. That's what they want. Because they use these videos and images to eradicate our hope. Show and share the videos of hope. Show the, and share the videos of the men and women and the kids saying, La ilaha illa Muhammad wa Rasulullah. These are the videos that you and I need to share. Stop raising awareness. Awareness to who? To the kuffar. What are they going to do for us? What, are, what have they done for us? Stuff them. Show only videos of hope. Show videos of Mashiach speaking. Telling the truth. That's the videos you want to share. As for the brothers and sisters who are watching these videos and being affected, can't even pray, can't look after their children, affecting their mental, it is haram for you to even see these videos. Get off social media. Go down in sujood, prostrate. Make dua. Read the Quran. That is better than seeing, sitting for three, four hours watching these videos. In summary, in summary, my brothers and my sisters, what do we do? Three things. Leave today knowing these three things, I've accomplished my khutbah. Number one is dua, supplication. Number two is donate. How can a Muslim live and sleep at night without donating? It's something beyond me. Number three, and it is more important than the dua. Yes, it is more important than the dua. Number three is reconnect with the Quran and Sunnah. Connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Connect with the masajid. Why? Why is it so important? It is because when we are connecting with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the first one, 
the dua is accepted. And so long as we are away from Allah, and so long as we are away from the deen, and so long as we are away from the masajid, uqsimu billah, a million dua will not be if, will not be, will not work, subhanAllah. A million dua will not work. We need to come back to the deen, and that's how we achieve victory with Idnillahi Azza wa Jal. In Allah, Malaika, they salute Allah Nabi. Ya you are letting them on Salu, Ali, or Salim Taslima. Allahumma Malaika, Bil Yahud. Allahumma Malaika, Bil Yahud. Allahumma Zelzilhum. Allahumma Zelzilhum. Wazelzil all the Tahta Akadamihim. Allahumma Sirhuana fi Philistin. Walking in Salah. Allah, Kabar, Allah, Kabar, Shadow, and Lay, Ila, Hail, Allah, and Shadow, and Muhammad, the Rasul, Allah. Hayyan al